Can we combine the benefits of the MACD and stochastic indicators? This is what the Schaaf trend cycle tries to achieve. In this video, I'll explain how the Schaaf trend cycle is calculated, how to tweak it for trend following, and how to use it to build an automated strategy for the dollar yen. The Schaaf trend cycle was developed by renowned currency trader Doug Schaaf, who publicly released it in 2008. It is a clever combination of the popular MACD and stochastic indicators, and is created by running the MACD through a double-smoothed stochastic calculation. There are three input parameters which we will use in the following calculations. First, we calculate the MACD, which is the difference between the 23 and 50 period EMAs. Next, we borrow the stochastics percent %K calculation and calculate the 10 period percent %K of the MACD. Next, we calculate the 3 period EMA of the percent %K to get the percent %D value. Finally, we get the shaft trend cycle by applying steps 2 and 3 again, but this time to the percent %D instead of the MACD. The trend cycle thus combines the benefits of trend and momentum indicators. The inclusion of the stochastic in step 2 is based on Schaaf's observation that markets often move in cycles. According to him, most currencies have 20 period recurring cycles, meaning there are about 20 periods between successive swing highs and lows. A 10 period stochastic look back, which is half the estimated cycle length, is therefore used by default. Depending on your market's characteristics, you can vary the stochastic look back to speed up or slow down the trend cycle. A shorter look back will produce more oscillator turns, while a longer look back will produce fewer, but perhaps more accurate turns. I have found a default value of 10 to work just fine. Like the stochastic, the shaft trend cycle oscillates between 0 and 100 and is most commonly used to predict the market turning points. The 75 and 25 levels are commonly used to denote overbought and oversold conditions, respectively. In a sideways market, when a shaft trend cycle crosses above the 25 line, the market could be exiting oversold conditions and reverting towards the mean. Likewise, when it crosses below the 75 line, it could be exiting overbought conditions. For trending markets, we can use the 75 and 25 levels to quickly detect pullbacks. While this fast reaction can be useful, I generally find the default trend cycle is too sensitive for trend following purposes. Even a gentle pullback or consolidation can cause the trend cycle to swing to the oversold region. If you are trading the 1 hour time frame or lower, I recommend lengthening the look back periods used for the MACD. Instead of the default 23 and 50 periods, you can try 50 and 100. Here's how the revised trend cycle compares. The whipsaws are now gone and the indicator stays in the overbought region, which is consistent with the appearance of the trend. With this smoother version, you can focus on the deeper pullbacks and remove a large number of false entries. On the higher timeframes, where price action is usually smoother, the default 23 and 50 periods should work better. Scharf recommended using his indicator to trade the cycles within trending markets. This means entering after a short-term pullback and hopefully riding the trend to the next swing high or low. Let's use this trading idea as a starting point. For longs, we will look for the revised trend cycle to cross above 25, which indicates that the pullback is ending. I will use three methods to improve my win rate. First, I will avoid entering the market on Monday, which is usually the quietest day of the week. I also want to be aligned with the longer term trend, so I will only go long when the close is above the 20 period EMA, which is in turn above the 50 period EMA. Lastly, as confirmation that the trend is indeed resuming after the pullback, I will set my entry at the highest high of the last 10 bars, which will be valid for 3 bars. This bar here meets our entry conditions and the stop price is placed. For risk management, I will set my stop loss at 2 times the average true range. For profit targets, the trend cycle actually provides two options. An aggressive option would be to take profits when a trend cycle becomes flat in the overbought region. An alternative is to take profits when it crosses under 75, which is sometimes right after a swing high occurs. In most cases, I find both options to be premature. Many times you will end up exiting a trade before a sizable profit has accrued, or even when you are still in a loss. I prefer to give my trend trades a little more breathing room, so I will use a 5x ATR profit target instead. 
this 2.5 reward to risk ratio will compensate for the lower win rate. The shaft trend cycle conditions are pre-programmed under the signals section, so just search for STC and select the relevant crossing above or below condition. Once the condition is in place, enter the input parameters, including the longer 50 and 100 periods for the EMA, and select the overbought and oversold levels. Next are the trend alignment conditions, and finally, we avoid entering the market on Monday. My stop entry is set at the highest high over the last 10 bars and is valid for 3 bars. For the ATR stop and profit target, I prefer not to optimize the default 14 period ATR lookback, so I only added parameters for the multiples. Time for our backtest on the 1 hour dollar yen from 2011 to 2021. The equity curve looks decent with every year being profitable. The 34% win rate is slightly low, but it's a natural consequence of the 2.5 reward to risk ratio. Perhaps some optimization will result in a more profitable compromise between the stop loss and profit target size. With its unique combination of trend and momentum detection, the shaft trend cycle is a great option for trend followers wishing to take advantage of pullbacks. If we have found a better way to use this indicator, perhaps as a mean reversion tool for sideways markets, be sure to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video.